How's it going? I hope everyone's doing well and thank you for tuning in this video. Today I'm here with my WWE Clash of Champions 2020 paper review. Let's go ahead and dive right into things. Now we did have two changes to the card. The SmackDown Women's Championship match, Bayley defending against Nikki Cross, as well as the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match, Nia Jax and Shane Baszler defending against the Riot Squad. Those matches were cut from the pay-per-view. The reason they gave is that Nia Jax, Shane Baszler, Nikki Cross were not medically cleared. So for that reasoning, they cut the uh, two title matches from the Clash of Champions pay-per-view. So we're now at two title matches uh, short on, on the pay-per-view, but it is what it is. Uh, but, you know, I thought I'd go ahead and mention it considering that those matches did affect, you know, pay-per-view because on the kickoff show, obviously one hour prior to the main card was supposed to have the Raw Women's title match for that match was then promoted to the main uh, card, which the uh, SmackDown Tag Team title match with Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro defending against Lucha House, Lucha, Lucha, Lucha House Party. There we go. Uh, that match was then bumped down to the kickoff show. So that match happened on the kickoff show. And uh, for the time it got, it was very fun. It was very enjoyable. I like the uh, hot freaking tags between Lucha House Party. A uh, really awesome spot where Metal League got caught by Cesaro on the outside on a dive, but then uh, Kalisto followed up with a dive on his own. And he spun uh, uh, Grand Metal League uh, into a Tornado DDT on Cesaro, so that was a great spot. Uh, but towards the end, Nakamura took out Kalisto in the ring. Cesaro and Nakamura were able to isolate uh, Grand Metal League. Did the uh, swing into the Kinsasha combination uh, for the one, two, three. So Cesaro and Nakamura retain the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Like I said, for the time they got, I thought it was a fun, enjoyable match. And then we go to the main pay-per-view, which opened up with the triple threat winner-take-all ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, and Jeff Hardy. What an incredible opener we had here. Very uh, creative with the different spots they will do the ladder match. Jeff Hardy, dude. Please don't be in any more ladder matches unless it's in front of a crowd. He nearly killed himself a handful of times in this match. I was, you know, my jaw was dropped with the amount of bumps Jeff Hardy was taking in the condition that he's in. The dude could barely walk, let alone take the bumps he was taking in this match. Absolutely insane. Sami Zayn, by far the MVP of this match. He looked absolutely phenomenal, uh, especially at the end. I thought he was very creative with the finish, and he, he, he came off looking like a million bucks. So this match was fantastic. Like I said, a lot of uh, vicious bumps. Uh, AJ Styles got a ladder thrown on him when he went for a phenomenal forearm. Uh, one spot where Sami Zayn threw a little ladder into AJ, which at first looked, you know, believable. But then they did the overview with a uh, camera shot where it was clear as day the ladder missed AJ by a mile. So then Corey Graves had a clarifying commentary that, oh, looked like AJ tried to deflect it, you know, but then it ended up, you know, hurting him still. So whatever, it was what it was. Uh, Jeff Hardy, man, he took a bump to the outside and the ladder, like he got caught in the ladder as he went down. He's absolutely vicious. Jeff Hardy recreated his WrestleMania 23 spot as well as 33 spot, I guess you can say, where he did the swanton off the ladder. Uh, well, pretty much any Jeff Hardy swanton uh, ladder match spot. I don't know why he just said WrestleMania. He's done it in several ladder matches. Uh, yeah, he did a swanton off the top of the ladder onto AJ Styles for an awesome spot. Uh, he took a nasty spill on the outside where he was sliding on the ladder and Sami Zayn totally just dumped him on the outside. That's where he got caught in the ladder and nearly killed himself. Uh, just a lot of a nasty bumps here. Uh, like you wouldn't expect these guys to do the bumps they were taking uh, for absolutely nobody. So kudos to all three of them. Sami Zayn, you no know, hit the Huluva kick to Jeff Hardy, take him out. Uh, just a lot of innovative stuff in this match. I thought all three men were very creative and uh, I thought it was, it was great, especially towards the end where Sami Zayn handcuffs Jeff Hardy's earlobe, his fucking, uh, his gauge ear to a ladder, because he's a fucking genius, and then goes in the ring, tries to handcuff AJ Styles, but AJ Styles fights back, but then uh, Sami Zayn says, fuck it, if you're going to try and climb the ladder, yeah, bring me with you, so Sami Zayn handcuffs himself to AJ Styles, so AJ Styles is like, well, fuck, now I gotta drag this guy with me, as he's climbing, Jeff Hardy is trying to get back in the ring to, you know, stop it, as he's doing that, Sami Zayn has a key in his mouth, takes it out, undoes his handcuff, but then uh, handcuffs AJ Styles onto the ladder so AJ Styles can't get any higher at a certain point of the ladder. It was just, man, genius, genius, genius Sami Zayn for the finish. And of course, that was able to allow Sami Zayn to retrieve both championship titles to declare himself the true undisputed Intercontinental Champion. What a fucking opening match we had here. Like I said, tremendous match. Absolutely loved it. Sami Zayn came off like an excellent heel. Awesome ladder match. Loved every second of that match. Uh, backstage, we had R-Truth, uh, Drew Gulak ends up winning the championship, funny little skit, you know, with R-Truth going to the referee's, referee's locker room, so that was enjoyable, Drew Gulak, new 24-7 champion, uh, then we go to the Raw Women's Championship match, Asuka defending against Zelina Vega, and I gotta say, Zelina Vega had a really good showing here, I thought she got her stuff in, she was able to, uh, bring it to Asuka, so, 
I thought her performance uh, alone was uh, worthy of the match. So yeah, it was solid. Uh, towards the end, it looked like Zelina Vega was actually, you know, closing in. She was able to lock in Asuka in some pinning, pinning predicaments where it looked like she got some good near falls, but then Asuka ultimately uh, got her into the Asuka lock, and then Zelina Vega submits, of course. So Asuka retains the Raw Women's Championship afterwards. Uh, Zelina Vega bows down to her. But as she does that, she ends up attacking Asuka. Bails, then Asuka just yells at her for like a minute before they just cut her off with her music. So I don't know what the whole point of... Zelina attacking her than Asuka flipping out was because it just seemed like it was for no reason. I might elaborate more in Raw. I don't know, but it just seemed like they should just ended it where with a match. Or Zelina could have just, you know, did the bow and just that was it. She didn't need to attack her to get heat or whatever. I just thought that was necessary. But like I said, good performance from Zelina. Uh, Zelina, that's Zelina. Definitely could show that she belongs in the women's division. So would not mind uh, seeing more of her in the women's division. So good solid match. Uh, next was the United States Championship, Bobby Lashley defending against Apollo Crews. This match is pretty much on par with their payback match, I thought. It was very back and forth. Uh, no no one really got the upper hand for the most part. Uh, at, the, at the end, you know, Bobby Lashley was able to hit the full Nelson slam after Apollo Crews missed a standing uh, shooting star. And then followed up with the Hurt Lock to get the submission victory to retain the United States Championship. So, it was a good solid match. Just, you know, like I said, not really much to it. It was pretty much, like I said, on par with their payback match. Uh, then we go to the Raw Tag Team Championship match, the Street Profits defending against Andrade and Angel Garza. I actually was a really, I was actually really enjoying this match. You know, I thought it was better than the SummerSlam match. I thought it was good back and forth action. I thought Andrade and Angel Garza were really gelling as a tag team in this match. I thought they were doing some really good tag team maneuvers. And then of course, you know, Angel Dawkins got that huge hot tag from Montez Ford. Ran a rough shot over Andrade and Angel Garza. He looked absolutely phenomenal. And then uh, Montez Ford got the tag back in. And then got worked on by Angel and Andrade. And then all of a sudden, you know, Angel Garza hit a huge knee onto Montez Ford. Tagged out to Andrade. Uh, Andre, Andrade, not Andre. Andrade was working over Montez Ford until uh, Angel Dawkins got a tag. Uh, Angel Dawkins is a spine buster. And then one, two. And it's clear as day, Andrade kicks out. But the referee counts to three. And the Street Profits retain the raw tag team titles just like that. Uh, very, very confused finish. Even Angel Dawkins, who just won the match, by the way, to retain the tag team titles, was visibly pissed off. Even he was like, what the fuck was that? Like, it was visible him and Montez Ford, who just retained the tag team titles, they were visibly pissed off that they won the way they did. Or, it's, like, it, it was obvious the finish got fucked up, but it's like, don't make it that obvious. Like, come on. Like, it was clear enough as it is. You don't need to show it. I mean, it would have been acceptable if it was like Andrade and Angel Garza doing, which, by the way, I guess the finish happened the way it's because Angel Garza hurt his knee. Uh, they were showing him getting, you know, so, uh, looked at by the referee and doctor. So I guess that's why the finish was the way it was. But still, uh, you don't need to go straight to it. You could have led into it. You could have just let Montez Ford hit a splash and followed it up like that. But I don't know. I thought the whole confusing finish really ruined what was going, uh, what was going in, you know, in a good direction. Like I said, I was enjoying the match until the finish. So whatever uh was what it was so i'm not gonna complain uh backstage uh drew gulak's being interviewed our truth beats him for the 24 7 win it back so yeah truth is champion for like the ninth thousandth time whatever it is uh bailey comes out to cut a promo says that she wins via forfeit but you know what she's gonna give a title shot to anyone that comes out and who answers it oscar for some fucking reason who why i don't know why but oscar it answers it they go at it for a little bit. Asuka pretty much kicks her ass. Bailey bails, gets a chair, and it beats up Asuka. DQ. So, uh, pretty much a huge waste of time. As Bailey's beating on Asuka, all of a sudden she's nailed by a chair by Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks comes back, makes a return, beats down Bailey. Bailey, uh, you know, obviously bails, and that's that. So, uh, obviously the direction that it looks like it's heading towards is Sasha Banks and Bailey inside Hell in a Cell at Hell in a Cell, which I'm all for. I know a lot of people want to have it safe for us to make it, but honestly, there's no perfect way for this feed to go right now than Hell in a Cell, if you ask me. So, I think it's a perfect time to do it. I don't see why not. There's no reason. And honestly, they could do a rematch at WrestleMania. You could have Bayley beat Sasha at Hell in a Cell. Sasha wins the Women's Royal Rumble and then challenges Bayley again at WrestleMania. And then that's where Sasha beats her. You could very easily still do it at WrestleMania. So, it's, um, I don't see why people are, you know, kind of complaining about it. But, yeah, um, I'm excited for that match. That should be a great one. But, yeah, like I said, the Women's title match is pretty much a waste of time. Just... A huge setup for Sasha Banks' return. And then we go to the ambulance match for the WWE Championship. Drew McIntyre defending against Randy Orton. 
I thought this was a fun match. I enjoyed it. You know, Drew McIntyre did a Claymore kick, which got missed, and he ended up Claymoring the door off the ambulance. Uh, Orton uh, got wailed on by a, a red chair by McIntyre, which that red chair looked absolutely ridiculous. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, Big Show got involved. He did a 2K universal interference where he choked on Randy Orton through the announce table, which did absolutely nothing because then Randy Orton was fine a minute later. They brought into catering, which Christian all of a sudden interfered and beat up Randy Orton, which let McIntyre get up her hand. And they brawled out to the ambulance area again where they got on top of the ambulance. Uh, Randy Orton actually uh, backdropped uh, McIntyre onto the uh, windshield, which actually fucked McIntyre's back up. He was bleeding a good little uh, portion on his back. Uh, but on top of the ambulance, out of nowhere, Shawn Michaels super kicks Randy Orton. Randy Orton falls onto a platform. Uh, him and McIntyre continue the brawl. Uh, McIntyre at gets RKO'd on the outside of the concrete. Orton has McIntyre lighted, loaded up. Looks like he's going to win the championship. McIntyre fights back. McIntyre beats the Holy Hell at Randy Orton. Claymore has a match won, but doesn't want to win it that way. Pulls Orton back out of the ambulance. Hits a punt on Orton. Throws him back in. Loads the ambulance up. McIntyre retains the WWE Championship. But like I said, it was a fun match. It was enjoyable for what it was. Getting a stipulation. The interferences kind of got like ridiculous because like they interfered but it really didn't do anything because like orton just was fine like a minute later so like the interferences really didn't mean anything in the long run but obviously it tied up with the story with orton taking you know all these guys out in this feud so it made sense obviously but i just thought it just didn't really make sense for the match it didn't make sense for mcintyre's character like mcintyre's been built up about beating the fuck out of everybody so why does he need all these guys to help him beat orton it just i don't know uh you know it just if I'm being nitpicky, I didn't like it for that reason. But like I said, I still thought it was a fun and jungle match. Uh, enjoyed it. And McIntyre still obviously the WWE champion. And then Ric Flair drives off with the ambulance with Oran Yorton loaded up. I thought that was a great touch to get Flair involved without him being physical. So, yeah, fun ambulance match. Like I said, given the stipulation, they probably did the best they could have done. And like I said, good tie-ins with everyone else. And then, of course, go to the main event, which was for the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defending against Jey Uso. Roman Reigns looking jacked as can fucking be, man. He looked ex absolutely excellent. And this match was phenomenal. This isn't a technical wrestling masterpiece, but if you want a great, you know, uh, storytelling, uh, great psychology, this this is a match to watch, man. This The great comparisons I'm seeing is, you know, great example of what, you know, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns was from WrestleMania 31. That's exactly kind of how this match was. You know, Roman Reigns in the Brock Lesnar role with Jey Uso in the Roman Reigns role. And it, it was excellent. You know, Roman Reigns was just tossing Jey Uso around, not really wanting to fight back. Uh, Jey Uso had some great comeback moments, man. He got some great convincing near falls on Roman uh, with some super kicks and the Uso splash on Roman. Uh, he looked absolutely excellent. And, you know, with Roman, the way he was just, you know, throwing Jey around and, uh, you know, how Jey was able to have his quick comebacks. But Roman was like, oh, you know, just for that, you know, I'm going to beat your ass some more. And, you know, I try to tell you, take the paycheck, uh, you know, take the paycheck. But you know what? You got to take this ass whooping that comes with it. I thought Roman was excellent. The one line I thought was great was when, uh, you know, at the beginning when Jay Uso, the filling out process, you know, Jay Uso was running the outside. Roman kept telling him, like, hey, I'm supposed to be the chief of the island if you can't even stay on the island. And I thought that was absolutely perfect line to give uh, Jay Uso there. But, yeah, man, uh, just like I said, in terms of a storytelling this was excellent and arguably this is probably the best universal championship match of all time i know this title was moving around for four years but this match match was excellent like i said not a wrestling clinic but if you involved the factors of the story and everything in it it was it was phenomenal and uh man this roman reigns this is the roman reigns i think everyone's been begging for for years and i'm, I'm pretty sure everyone's satisfied we're finally getting it so Roman Reigns up destroying Jey Uso uh, after Jey Uso hits a splash on Roman Reigns. Uh, but they do a fucking awesome, awesome low blow where uh, Roman Reigns did a kick out, but his arm flung into Jey's crotch where he low blowed him. That was so fucking creative. I don't think I've ever seen that. So I absolutely love that. That was able to set up Roman did it a spear. But Roman said, you know what? Tell me that I'm the chief tribal. He's holding Jey's face in the camera. He said, hey, tell everyone I am the tribal chief. Jay's not having it, so Roman's like, no, I'm going to beat your ass some more. Roman hits some more spear, he's laying some forearms, and he's beating the fuck out of Jay. And Jay's just refusing to give up. He's refusing to sit there and tell him that he's a tribal chief. Fucking 
excellent. And of course, you got Jimmy Uso running down. He's like, hey, man, knock it off. He, stop kicking his ass. It's fucking ended. And you got Jay Uso telling Jimmy, you know, hey, don't end it. You know, hey, you know, let it happen. I'm not going to give up. Don't throw the towel in because Jimmy's got a towel. He's going to throw it in. And Roman say, hey, man, just tell him, tell me, and I'll, I'll stop. And Jay's like, no. So Roman keep beating the fuck out of him. And Jay, uh, or Jimmy's had enough. Throws a towel in for Jay. Referee rings the bell, and that's it. Fucking fantastic finish. Roman doesn't give a fuck, though. J Roman's still beating the fuck out of Jay. And then Jimmy comes rolling in. He rolls his body over top of him. You know, he tells him he's enough. He's pleading for him. He's like, hey, man, you're the tribal chief. Stop, please. You're the champ. You know, let leave him alone. Let him be. You're the fucking guy. You're the head of the table. Jimmy just pleading for his brother's life. Fuck, man, that's good. Fuck, that was good. Excellent storytelling. And, of course, the coordination with the way that uh, Jay had on. The lie. You put it on Roman. Fuck, man. That was the icing on the cake right there. Fuck. That match was so good. So fucking good, man. Everyone needs to see that match. That was absolutely excellent. Believable near falls and believable comebacks for Jay, where you had that, that glimpse of hope that he might actually pull it off. You know, Michael Cole, by, my, Michael, blah, blah, by the way, which I, that's what I was trying to say, Michael Cole's commentary was phenomenal in this match as well. He was the icing as well on the cake for this match. Uh, not the ice in the cake, but maybe the chi maybe the cherry on top. Uh, that's what he was. He he really added to the match as well, if you ask me. So his commentary with the story, excellent main event. Uh, Ten, which I thought was a great show, Clash of Champions. Even though I wasn't excited for, I thought it was a bunch of rematches. Uh, it took me by surprise and it was a great show. I thought it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. He had some excellent matches. The opener was fantastic. The main event was fantastic. Orton McIntyre was a lot of fun. The rest of the card was good. Uh, nothing to complain about, really. So, Clash of Champions, great pay-per-view, in my opinion. Hell in Cell is next month. Like I said, Sasha Banks and Bayley will probably headline that show. And whatever else happens, uh, will probably be some good stuff as well. So, I'm excited for Hell in Cell. It should be a great pay-per-view. Next weekend, obviously, we have NXT TakeOver 31. So, that should be a great show. Headlined by Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly. Really excited for that match. So, I uh, can't wait to see that show. But, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please feel free to leave a like below. And, of course, the next time, I'll see you guys. And thank you guys for watching the video.